Um, I went back to Washington. We held all the committee hearings, open hearings, classified briefings, and I went in with an open mind saying, give me all of the information. Um, I want to make sure that I do my due diligence before I take a position or, or make a decision on this. And ultimately, uh, Secretary Kerry came in and briefed us. The answers to very direct questions that I had, such as, what is our objective? What What is your objective in wanting to go and start another war in another country? Uh, what do you, how do you think they will respond? Uh, what will you do next? What is that second, third, fourth order of, of effects and consequences that will always happen? Uh, and the, the, the question, you know, when I said, what is your objective? Uh, I believe it was Secretary Kerry or someone from the State Department who said, well, you know, we don't want to deliver a, a, a de decapitation. We don't want it to be a pinprick. We want this to be a punch in the gut and send a message. And my question was, OK, so a punch in the gut. Like. What will you do when they respond? And they said, well, we don't think they'll re we don't think there'll be a response. That's your plan. You don't think there will be a response. <laughs> Gary said if that? somebody came up and punched you in the gut, would you like just not respond <laughs> if they don't respond? They've got some pretty, you know, weaponized, powerful friends. Uh, you don't think they'll respond. And what if they don't respond to us, but they respond by attacking some of our friends who may be in the region? All of these different kinds of questions. There's like, well, we just don't think they'll do that. Well, what happens next? Well, you know. We think this will send a strong message. And and it's the same kind of like political BS talk that means nothing and is so disconnected from the reality of the people on the ground who have to live with those consequences. And it really surprised me. And maybe I shouldn't have been surprised, but it surprised me that after so many years of looking back at the massive mistakes of Iraq, that they could be so glib and just saying, oh, we'll just go drop some bombs and send a message and and that'll be it. They learned nothing. They learned nothing. And so I, I penned an op-ed and uh, published it. And I was I was certainly the first Democrat, maybe the first member of Congress to, to come out in opposition to President Obama's request. And uh, within hours of publishing that op-ed, I got a call from the White House uh, and essentially what they said was, how dare you? How dare you go against your president? How dare you go against the president who came from your home state? Not a moment of the conversation. There wasn't much of a conversation, first of all, but they were not interested at all in the reason for my opposition, which I, I stated pretty clearly in the op-ed how, how well uh thought out this decision was it was not made haphazardly they weren't interested in my experience that i brought that helped inform my decision of having deployed twice to the middle east before uh and it 